We grew up in a community of people who believed in you, who um, offered support in everything you did and the way you thought about the world and who engaged you in it. I think the day I was most proud of was 9-11 when I was deputy mayor and Norm was on an airplane uh, flying to Washington, D.C. And all of a sudden I realized I was the mayor and there'd been this horrible attack in New York City. And I'd, that was not in my playbook. And it was just a matter of staying cool and, and getting through that day. But that was, that was a day that I realized, oh my God, sometimes the deputy mayor really is the mayor. When you think about a career of trying to be engaged meaningfully as a member of society, the things that I feel most proud of are the things that I seem to have inherited from my family. My parents were very active in our community, so they taught us, my brothers and me, the value of being engaged. They did it. So I'm most proud of the fact that I believe we have continued their tradition of trying to make a difference and being seriously engaged in the issues of our community and our time. She has fought many battles that uh, I don't have to today. Uh, she has made inroads into both the public and private sector in areas where for many African American men and women uh, they were very challenging to, to break through. But she has taken on that, that sacrifice and she has led a good fight so that um, many ways the access to opportunity has been far greater because of Dr. Josie Johnson's work. Susan Kimberly has devoted really a life to public service. It's been public service, uh, whether it was uh, elective office in St. Paul, whether it was then working within uh, a, a Coleman administration, whether it was doing economic development, Chamber of Commerce, that's all public service. My first mentor was Larry Cohen. He took me by the hand, literally, took me out into the neighborhoods, introduced me to people, showed me how to introduce myself, showed me how to campaign. My second mentor was both when I was on the city council as Bob and when I came out as Susan. George Latimer was there to sort of welcome me back to City Hall and keep me in, the, in my hand in the game and, and, and give, me a, give me breaks along the way. Susan was my neighbor and, and Susan was the nicest neighbor to my kids. My wife loved Susan Kimberly and love Susan Kimberly because Susan was so gracious and so wonderful and so kind to our kids. In 1996, uh, Paul Wellstone had just come out against gay marriage and, and for the DOMA Act. And people asked me to march with him in the Pride Parade. And I said, sure, I'll do that. And so he explained to me along the parade route why he had done what he had done. And he you know, basically came down to it. He, he believed marriage was between a man and a woman. And so we got done with the parade and I'm listening to him do his speech after the parade and I'm listening to what he said and I said, you know, I just forgave Paul Wellstone in a heartbeat. Maybe I ought to lighten up a little bit of my old neighbor, uh, Norm Coleman. And that was the beginning of a conversation that we had that I wound up being deputy mayor. The character that, that I admire most, I wish I had more of, really do, is courage. They're both extraordinary, courageous women. Susan has courage. Try being a transgender woman standing in the first row of a Republican convention, you know, getting the crowd fired up for Norm Coleman, okay? That takes courage. You know, I've thought a lot about this sharing an evening with Dr. Johnson, and there's something very different from the oppression that she has lived with her life and that I have lived with in my life. You know, the impression of the African-American people in this country was institutional, blatant, 
Uh, it was, it was slavery. It was incredibly different than what I think gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people come up against. It isn't to say that what I faced wasn't hard or, or difficult. It, it was, but they're very different. Mine was a private situation. Mine was a private closet. I didn't ever have labels on the water fountains that I could use or not use. And yet oppression is oppression. Closets are closets. Um, being put down and held down is being put down and held down. So there are similarities and there are differences. And, it, and I've wondered a lot about, well, I wonder what Dr. Johnson would say about that. Unfortunately, many of the challenges that we are facing right now are not new, but they're disappointing. Many of our people thought that the passage of laws, the fact that many of the forbidden policies were changed, that perhaps it meant freedom and opportunity. So for many of us who've been in this struggle for generations, right now, we are having to reteach our children to try to encourage them to be hopeful and 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 to remember who they are we know that as adults we have a lot of teaching to do because our children and many who direct them don't know their history one important key thing is that we can't measure are all of those opportunities that she has influenced in our city and in our state and in our country um, that we really don't know, uh, that go silent, uh, just because of she has touched upon and left a footprint in so many areas, um, whether civil rights, whether making sure that housing was uh, affordable and adequate for people of color, uh, that for schools and education and making sure that children of color were getting uh, a proper and decent education. Keep in mind that for the first 42 years of my life, I lived a lie. So I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable talking about great principle. I lived an outright lie. I wasn't at all honest with anybody about who I am, not even myself. Then I made a decision that I was going to live as who I am. And it was a rather radical change from where I had been. I didn't have any choice at that moment, but others would say, this is who I am. I'm sorry I lied, but I'm going to ask you to accept me now the way I am. And I expected the world to say, we can't accept you. And instead, the world said, my God, I don't know how you could have possibly have lived like that. I had no idea what you were going through. It was the most incredible welcome anyone could imagine. And at, at that point, I had a different relationship to living with integrity. The question is, who's going to come along next with integrity and vision from anywhere on the political spectrum and do something to get us past this mess that we're in? It's going to be fascinating to see where it comes. But without vision and integrity, this whole thing doesn't fly. I think it takes courage to lead today. Uh, we're, we're, we're such a divided society. I know so many folks are kind of sitting in their corner, sitting in their left corner, sitting in their right corner. I, I think you need courage to get out of the corner. For all of us who, who are uh, leaders today, to know that um, she is still relevant today. And we are still learning from her and we're still learning from her example. So she inspires me, whether it's a social justice issue, whether it's um, uh, workers' rights, whether it's women's rights, um, whether it's young people's rights, she is always there front and center and she has really been a, a cheerleader of the great things that uh, this state and certainly this country has to offer. We must talk to each other. We must create an environment that allows you to be honest with me, allows you to ask questions that may 
create controversy or anger or frustration, but they are a part of the system that we've grown up in. And we must talk about these things. I think folks don't understand the impact that they've had on others, the inspiration they had. I, I talked about courage. I have no doubt that Susan Kimberly has, has inspired other people to be more courageous. I think the true mark of a leader is one who is courageous enough to step out of their comfort zone at risk and peril to themselves, and she has done that. Dr. Johnson has left me with the obligation and dedication of service to give back to my community, uh, that this is more than just me. This is really about my legacy of leadership and that everything that I do should be cultivating the next generation and to feel pride in that, uh, to feel um, humility in my service, but that ability to, of service and to give back to our community is absolutely what I'm most dedicated, most obligated to Dr. Josie Johnson. You gotta figure out who you are and you've gotta be that. And that's not very complicated, but that's really what I've got to say. Folks out there, okay, you know, celebrate, embrace your, your humanity, okay? You know, be who you are. And if you do that, you really can change the world. <laughs>